Always that question, absolutely. Um, and uh, you can't stop the questions. And whilst the results are like they are, then I accept it. It's part of the job. Um, we were talking before the game about you know, watching the all or nothing at Arsenal and two years into Mikel's reign, he's close to getting the sack and people are wanting him out and it's a disaster. And obviously now things have changed a little bit. But that's just the way it is. You know, if you look at Jurgen's situation, I haven't got the results and all of a sudden people want him out. It's just... Stop. I have to stop Graham Potter here. You just Firstly, don't put Jurgen Klopp's name in your mouth when comparing his situation to yours. The early days of Jurgen Klopp, he was throwing away some leads and Liverpool weren't winning trophies, but they got to finals in his first season and they progressed from day one. Mikel Arteta won an FA Cup in his first season and did not go on a run of two wins in 17 games. He wasn't playing as badly as your Chelsea team. And the difference between you and them is they didn't have £600 million pounds invested into their squad they didn't have the biggest january transfer window in the history of world football no club has ever spent that much in a january window in fact no club has spent as much as chelsea in one year on players ever could put point blank in the history of football trying to justify your failings by talking about Mikel arteta talking about jürgen klopp for me is weakness and it is an absolute disgrace. Now, what's really interesting is this news that's come out this afternoon. The Chelsea's owners continue to back Graham Potter, but there is now a growing feeling that the next two games will be make or break for him. That isn't backing your manager, by the way. That means you're ready to sack him. And as I've been telling Chelsea fans for days and days and days now, this PR onslaught from the club protecting him, saying all things are okay, they're lying to you. And this is about you rising up and being honest with yourselves. This guy is not good enough. And the fact that he dare talk about Mikel Arteta, the fact that he dare talk about Jurgen Klopp while you're struggling is embarrassing. It is utterly embarrassing. Mikel Arteta took over a fallen Arsenal team that had been on its ass for years. And yes, it took him time to make them into title contenders. It absolutely did. But this guy was winning trophies from day one. He was building a system. He was building a culture. He was building a philosophy. And he's been successful now. For you to try and equate your struggles to his is absolutely wrong. And remember what happened in Mikel Arteta's first season as well. There was the, the closing down of the season because of CV19. There was all these ongoing factors as well. I just think it's wrong to do that. I think you've got to keep Arteta's name out of your mouth. I really, really do. But Chelsea fans, I want your thoughts and feelings on that. Do you think there's there's an, there, there's there's a an equal comparison between the two, including Jurgen Klopp as well, or not? Let me know what you think. Make sure you're smashing, being leaving your comments below. But scan the QR code that you can see just above my finger, or click on the link in the description below to ensure that you are following my TikTok account. Exclusive content on the way there. So Arsenal fans were very disappointed. Very disappointed indeed um, after beating Leeds. Not just because it was a very good performance, but they wanted more. And they feel VAR's got a bit of a vendetta against them. Take a little listen to this. Chaos Saka from Harry Souter. Um, could Arsenal have had a penalty here? Was this not a clear and obvious error or not? I think this is a foul, uh, Rob. I, I know Souter will say he slips, but I think... Although he slips, he still grabs him. I think he takes him down and I think he impacts on him. I know the ball's going behind him, but for me, it's a foul. Another mistake against Arsenal. And this was the, during the game, I kind of said I didn't think this was a penalty. And I'm always a man who likes to admit when maybe I was wrong. And everybody else's opinion on this is, yeah, Terry, I think it, I think it was a penalty. I've watched it back two or three more times. Hindsight of slow motion. I suppose. And I get where Arsenal fans are coming from. The guy slips, grabs hold of Saka, wraps his arms around him, and the penalty isn't given. Could these decisions in recent weeks, the lines not being drawn, this penalty, uh, Martinelli, earlier on in the season, Martinelli's goal being disallowed against Manchester United, could these things end up costing Arsenal? Are Arsenal fans worried about the officiating maybe costing them a really important three points that maybe just swings this title race in favour of Man City. 
I want your thoughts and I want your feelings on that, people. Make sure like buttons are being hit and you're subscribing. I, I, I want to know. I need to know because it's a big talking point. It's a big talking point. And all I want in this regard is your thoughts and feelings. Now, keeping it with Arsenal, take a listen to hear what Simon Jordan had to say today. Of the season. By the way, this is Arsenal Man United related. United obviously winning the Carabao Cup. I want to get your thoughts on this. Undoubtedly is Arsenal. Arsenal are the story of the season. I think that's true. But I'm going to let Simon talk for a minute and then tell you why I think this is... There's sort of an underhand tactic in this and we'll, we'll talk about why. For him to have rebuilt this side and built it to a point where they're actually potentially going to win the Premier League, I think they might get nicked by Man City, but that's just me looking in my mind's eye thinking experience will trump the youth that Arsenal have got. But the team of the season for me are Arsenal. And the story of the at, season at, is Arsenal. At this time. Because the, the big noise in the Premier League is not League Cup, is who wins the Premier League. So this is Simon Jordan, who all year has been disrespectful to Arsenal, doubting they're going to win it, always putting a new challenge in front of them, always stating that, you know, oh, they've, got, they've got to pass this test. And what about that one? What about when they get an injury? What about when they get beaten? What about when they go on a bad run? And after all of it, he's still saying he thinks Man City are going to win the league. But United win a trophy. And he now tries to suck up to Gooners, who have a rivalry with Man United, are not happy that United are winning. Now he tries to get on his knees. He tries to open his mouth. He tries to insert... He tries to insert Arsenal's penis into his gob, butter you all up, so you do his bidding and attack Man United online. Nobody is stating that winning a League Cup is bigger or better than winning the Premier League. They are two mutually exclusive conversations. Man United's rebuild is going very well. Man United are moving their way back up the league table. Man United fans feel that we are getting back to our very best. United fans in, in, in our own circles, we will think we, we will care more about our season being the way it is than Arsenal winning the league in our Man United circles. If you were to get Man United fans to be honest and say, well, what's the better season? Arsenal winning the Prem or you winning the League Cup? Of course, in their heart of hearts, I'll say Arsenal winning the Prem. But this here is an underhand tactic, almost divide and conquer in many ways. How can I? I want to hate on Man United. So what I'll do, I'll suck up to Arsenal fans. Some will be gullible enough to believe it, by the way, and make them do my fighting, my bidding for me. This is shameless. Man United being back, Man United being doing well, Man United challenging, Man United winning, shuts people like Simon Jordan down that said it wouldn't happen. But instead of him admitting it, he tries to turn the tables and make it sound like, oh, why is everybody suddenly praising Man United? Arsenal should be getting all the praise. They, yeah, you ain't praised them all year, son. Oh, yeah, you'll be slagging them off. Now suddenly you want to praise them? Yeah, smells a little bit fishy to me. Let's go! Come on! About Manchester United, but the, and the Man United fans are going to say, "Oh, that's the typical Keown, you know, coming on here." But let's look at the League Cup. Let's look who they've beaten. So they beat Burnley at home. They've beaten Charlton at home. They've beaten Forest team, who are kind of like way bottom at the bottom of the table. Really, not the best of teams. And now they're champions. At they've won. Time. They've won the Carling Cup. So, Jim, the, the, people are now talking about quadruples and yeah. all sorts <laughs> of. Things. Listen, I love this. I'm. Lo I am. Lo I am loving the bitterness here. And I tell you why I love the bitterness because. Who Man United have played is an absolute irrelevance. It's an irrelevance. The reason that Newcastle, by the way, in the final is a difficult game. But the reason that we played Newcastle, you could argue, is because Southampton knocked out Man City. And then Newcastle knocked out Southampton. Brighton knocked out Arsenal. And then Cholton, <laughs> then Cholton, who Man United knocked out, beat Brighton. So this isn't this is what cup football is all about. It isn't Man United's fault that they they had they didn't even have a fortuitous draw. The big teams all got knocked out. That same Nottingham Forest team that he's slagging off here was knocked out by Tottenham. If Tottenham and Arsenal and Man City would have won the games they should have won, United on paper wouldn't have had as uh, as an easy run. How is that our fault? You could apply that logic to every type of tournament. If, if Liverpool were at their absolute best and City were at their best and Chelsea were at their best, maybe Arsenal wouldn't be top of the league. It's, it, it's, it's a fair point, but it isn't reality. I, 
I don't listen. I understand the bitterness, but the trying to play Man United's uh, season down is crazy. And I told you all a few weeks ago, Terry, why do you defend Arsenal when everyone tries to play their season down? Because I want the credibility to fight back when they start doing it to Manchester United. And look what we have seen today. Wait for it. 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 After he scores his goal, he goes missing in games. This is about Marcus Rashford. I always think Rashford's good, but I feel like after he scores, he doesn't do much in games. After he scores his goal, what does he do? No. Now, this is a question. This is a question that's been posed, and I see a lot of people say it. So I'm going to throw this question back, and I'm going to say this with respect. This, this clip got uh, sent to me. I'm going to do some research and find out who these gentlemen are, big up their podcast. I always support the, the, the content creating communities. But I want to throw this challenge back to them and to you all. Tell me what he should be doing. Quantify it. And then what we can do is check what other players are doing in that in that regard. So I want to ask the question, what else do you think he should be doing? Everyone's silent because he doesn't think, do anything. After the World Cup. Now, everybody's silent because we don't know what you mean. I want you to quantify what else does he do. What are you expecting to see from him? That's what I'm waiting for. Rashford, I've seen a different side to Rashford. He's scoring goals. Yeah. That's, yeah, it. That's, that's it. But he's been yeah. slapping goals for a while, bro. Let's be he's honest. Good no, no, form, he, bro. But he's, he's been not slapping goals for longer. He's never had a 20-goal season in the Premier League. So that is a true fact. He's never scored 20 goals in the Premier League. But he's a winger. He's played a few games up front in recent weeks when him and Weghorst have swatched, uh, sort of moved around a little bit. Weghorst has gone 10. He's gone 9. But this guy scored 20. This is the third season out of four that he scored over 20 goals in all competitions. He has been in the last of the three of the last four seasons. He's been one of the highest goal contributing wingers in European football. Top four leagues here. Not I'm not talking about comparing him to people in Belgium leagues and Portuguese leagues and Scottish leagues and Austrian leagues. I'm talking the elite leagues that we all care about. This guy, three or four seasons have done that. We know last year he was poor, but let's not pretend he hasn't been scoring goals in other seasons. Bro, you're forgetting how bad Rashford was last, last year. Right now, his form is easily 20 goal a season in the Prem form. 100%. But how long can he maintain that form? Now, that's a fair question from this man. But let's wait and see. If you don't think he's going to maintain it, say that with chest. Instead of posing the question like, mm, but can he maintain it? Well, do you think he'll maintain it? And if he drops off, what's an acceptable level of goals from a wide player? You've got, you can't just throw out statements and not set a standard. And that's my issue with a lot of the, the, these conversations. And the same in this clip here that was sent to me. The guy sent me two. Oh, you can't talk about a ref, man. And I'm, 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 I'm going to land. I'm halfway there. I'm halfway there. I'm halfway there. I'm halfway there. No. I'm halfway there. And you, you might not watch Bull. You might not watch Bull. You see Rashford. You see Rashford. He's in amazing form. Fact. Amazing. But I'm going to cut that form off. Goal scoring form. Let's not get yes. it twisted. Yes. There's a big difference that's, that's my, between that, yeah. scoring goals and all round game. Yeah. Right? So I think I understand where he's coming from. You know, you look at a Lionel Messi, he's got a great all round game. But that's Lionel Messi. I'll throw the same question out to these gentlemen and their podcast. What do you want that to look like? Quantify it. And I've had this debate with many people before and other players. You lay down what you expect to see from him. And then we do two things. We check. And then you also give me examples of the other players that are doing all these things as well. You know, whether it's completing dribbles, crosses, through balls, pass completion, you know, a, a statistical breakdown. Or tell me something for the eye test that he has to be doing in games. Show me examples of his contemporaries and his, and his kind of rival players in his position doing it. And then we'll assess it. But the problem I reckon you're going to find, this is just a, a hypothesis, not a fact, is that when you actually throw out the things you expect him to be doing, I bet you he's not doing it any less than people, the, the, the other names that you mentioned. I just think it comes from people not liking Marcus Rashford very much in terms of him as a footballer, not him as a person. And now he's doing really well. It's how can I word something to create a little bit of salt or to take away a little bit of the shine from what he's doing? But as I say, I throw the question out. Tell me what else you should be doing. I really want to know. Uh, let's have this conversation and debate. Listen, everyone who's tuned into the show today, a big thank you to each and every single one of you. Hit the like and the share button, and we'll see you all again very, very soon.